God. Let's just pray for her right now. Father, God, you say, we thank you for this woman of God. Now you are raising her up. It won't be the God. first time, nor it will be the last time. And I pray that what happens today would send her on a trajectory of destiny and courage. Yes, yes, thank you, Lord. I pray that your anointing would be upon her, yes, that every person yes, so that hears God, the you. word of the Lord coming yes, so forth yes, out of her hallelujah. would be changed and encouraged. Yes, In Jesus' thank name, amen. amen and amen. amen. That shocked me. <laughs> um, I, I love Prophet John and Prophet Smeliana. They have changed my life. I, I thank God every day for their obedience, for for everything that they have done in my life. They're, they're so good. Um, for those of you that don't know me, um, which is everyone, <laughs> my name is Teresa Altamirano. <laughs> uh, you can say however, whatever works for you. I'm Teresa, fine. Teresa, I heard it all. <laughs> um, but when it's so funny when Papa John had given me the topic uh, last week, and I was like, okay, well that's easy. I can yeah. talk for hours about that. <laughs> um, but then he, he went on with his message, and he said something in his message that I looked up because I was I was like, why is that? Um, he had said that um, the New Testament was written in Greek, and I was I looked it up, and it turns out during God's silent years, um, Alexander the Great, you guys know him, he was taking over territories and. Greek just became the new language. Right. So then that brought me to the silent years, the last time that God had spoken, which was in Malachi. So then, we're going to talk about Malachi today. <laughs> um, and also I wanted to, yesterday morning I had a dream. I was sleeping and then, um, well obviously I was sleeping. <laughs> um, uh, I, had, I was up here preaching, I was doing what I'm doing right now. And it was towards the end and I had asked Papa John for a water. And then I finish, I sit down, Prophet John comes with a huge bag of prunes. And I was like, all right, <laughs> not what I asked for, but I'll take it. Um, but I, I start asking the Lord, like, Lord, what was that? Because how many know God speaks through dreams? Yeah. God speaks yeah. in many ways. Yeah. Don't, do not limit God the way he speaks to you. Um, but basically what I got, um, I looked it up and everything, but what I got from him directly was, I have given you fruit, go share it. <laughs> so that was confirmation that I got to tell you my testimony. So I remember the morning, it was 6 a.m. I woke up and I had gotten my feelings hurt, my feelings were hurt. And I, I got up and I got ready and I was, I was, we had a baby dedication um, at 11. I was ready by 7. So I was like, oh man, I don't want to sit here and, and cry, you know what I mean? I had to stay busy. So I texted everybody. I was like, breakfast, anyone? Let's go. Um, let's get busy. So I met up with them, told them what was going on. I was like, all right, so we're going to do church. And then after, we're going to get shooters. <laughs> you guys, we're not, we don't do religion here, amen? We're not so spiritual. We're, we're honest about what we can. Um, so we went to the church. I sat during the worship. I sat um, during the message. After church, I'm out of breath because I'm so excited. <laughs> um, during the message. Um, so we're leaving. I'm like, okay, let's go get shooters. I gotta get drunk, I don't wanna be sober right now. This woman comes and she says, can I pray for you? And I said, okay, something so simple, telling me that God is with me. Yeah. How many of you know that? It sounds simple to us, but someone going through a season, they just need to hear that God is with them. Yeah. That changed my life. Yeah. You guys gotta go pray for people and tell them that God is with them, right. because you never know what they're walking through. Right. Right. She said, God is protecting me. It is everything. I mean, that morning, everything that I experienced, she spoke on it. I mean, she doesn't even know my name. Right. And she told me what. I mean, that was my confirmation that God. Okay, so um, we didn't get drunk that night. We ain't got to know we had a, a movie night, right? <laughs> um, Praise God. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then I went, I was going to this church. I was attending services, and I was like, okay, the next step is to serve. Yeah. So I'm trying to plug into this church. Um, it was during COVID, so I did all the classes that I needed to do to become a member of the church so I can um, serve. Um, I did the classes, completed them, emailed them. I never heard back, so I was still attending the services, but I wasn't serving. And then, here comes the Citadel. <laughs> and it felt like God's gift, wrapped gift to me. Thank you, God. Um, I didn't even ask God for this. This was 
a church that he made for me to attend. It was so personal, like I, I'm sure it is for, for many of you. Um, but then, so I went to my first service, amazing. I went to the next service, Prophet David, he gave me this word. It was so powerful. I was so mind blown. I was like, what? That's crazy. So the next service, Prophet John comes and he, he preaches a whole sermon about my word. <laughs> Prophet John didn't know the, the word that I had gotten. He preaches a whole sermon about Deborah. Um, it was powerful. It was, I mean, I was touched. And then after the service, Prophet John gives me another prophetic word. And he gives me the same word that Prophet David gave me. Oh, wow. And I was, I mean, I can I mean, I'm a new believer, right? And God's just blowing my mind. He keeps yeah. talking to me. Yes. And, um, but I'm like, when I, when I got both words, I'm like, they don't know me. They don't know what I've done. They don't know my mistakes. That, that's, that can't right. be my word. Right. That's not who I am. I'm not a talker. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you're telling me that I'm going to talk in front of people? Like, no, you got the wrong person. <laughs> Maybe that was Veronica's word. Maybe that was her <laughs> word. <laughs> um, but they didn't know me, right? They're just the prophetic. It doesn't call who you are. Right. It does not call you who you were. Right. It does not tell you your mistakes. Oh, That's not the prophetic. Right. The prophetic, God shows them something in you that he has put in you. Oh, come on. God knows you before you were knitted in your mother's womb. Yes. 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 So what the prophetic does, it calls out your potential. Yes. Yes. So you don't even know what you're capable of. Come on. What God does. Yeah. God knows you. Yeah. God knows you better than you know yourself. Amen. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. I am so thankful for the prophetic. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you will, you'll, you hear, I'm on social media, so, and I'm, I'm talking the gospel, and I hear so many things. I mean, from Christians, from non-Christians, I hear a lot, and I'm going to talk about it. Um, but one of the things that you'll hear from other Christians is the prophetic is not valid. It's not used as much as it was in the Old Testament. Right. But I'll tell you, <laughs> it very much is. I mean, it hasn't even been three years since I got my prophetic and it. I mean, it brought me salvation, yeah. sanctification. Yeah. The sin slowly left my life with the prophetic. <laughs> the prophetic is alive and well in the church. The Holy Spirit is, yes, the Holy Spirit is with you, yeah. but the, the Holy Spirit also speaks to other people. And you just, you have discernment, so you can decide what's for you and what's not. Um, but how many know Apostle Paul? Um, just some guy wrote half the New Testament, yeah. more than half. Yeah. Apostle Paul was saved when God spoke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let's read it. Yeah. Yeah. It says in Acts, Acts chapter nine three. Um, as he was approaching Damascus, I'm sorry if you guys are not there yet, but I'll read it. Um, Acts nine three. As he was approaching Damascus on his mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. Verse four. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? This is God speaking to him. Paul then asked him, who, who are you? He, he acknowledges I am God. Um, Saul, he was killing Christians. Um, so basically God told him, you're persecuting me. You're hurting my people, you're hurting me. Um, and then Paul goes blind for three days. Kind of like how... God went silent for 400 years, right? Right. <clears throat> Paul goes blind for three days. You know, out in this world, you'll hear, you'll hear so many times, like Meliana was saying, faithless questions of why. Why is suffering? Why this? Why? Questions that God doesn't need to answer. He's already answered, actually. Um, but what if Paul needed to go blind so that the blindness could be removed off his eyes? Yeah. Paul regained his sight, and he was, he did huge things for the kingdom of God. Okay, another time, Paul was, um, he was on his way to trials. He was on another journey. He gets bit by a snake on his hand. Wow, yeah. Yeah. It's supposed to kill him. It does not kill him. So Paul, with that same hand, he turns around and he starts healing people. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Right. Oh, good. What if there's a point to your, sur your sur suffering? Um... Jesus, I'm so glad Jesus kept his scars when he risen because, you know, he, he shows it and he says to Doubting Thomas, which he's not doubting, we know that, right? 
we all go through our doubts, especially as new believers. You have, you're going through so many things. You're, you're doubting. You're, I mean, you're dealing with so much conviction. I mean, when I first started to walk with the Lord, I mean, I wasn't even breathing right. Like, you guys know when you, when someone slaps you, you gotta give them another cheek. You can't slap them back. That was news to me. So it was a, it was a time of repenting and repenting, and you know, you could, you could get discouraged during that time. Yeah. You could feel worthless, you feel filthy, but I mean, keep going, keep pursuing God. God doesn't see that. God sees who you can be. God sees your potential, yeah. and He's going to continue to call it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jesus was wounded. Yeah. Jesus is still healing today. Yes. Amen. Yes. Jesus is still healing today. Yes. Um, I conveniently have this scar in my hand. Convenient for this talk, not convenient when it happened. Um, you, you asked my mom. Everyone heard it. This hand, I've been hurt, I've been wounded, you know what I mean? I, I've been tied down by depression and anxiety. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to use the same hand to heal. Amen? That's what God does. yourself. Stop. Get your eyes off of yourself. Yeah. Think of what you can do. Think of what God can do through you. It's such an honor it is to be a, a hound of God. Um, but let's start in Malachi. Let's we'll start. Let's go to Malachi. Um, in Malachi, just some background. Give me one second. I gotta drink water. So Malachi, uh, background information, it's a hundred years after the exile. Hey Amen. The exile is over. Yeah. Um, so Malachi, I mean, the book of Malachi reminds me so much of what this generation, how this generation talks about God, how this generation acts. I mean, generation. I've, how many times have you heard, I don't want to do all that. Yeah. I don't want to be part of this. Right. Right. They don't want to be a part of religion, but we're not practicing religion here. No. We're, we're, we're coming one with the Holy Spirit and right. we're being obedient right. to what He asks. Whatever He asks, He can yes. have. He's my Creator. He has given me all of this and He can take it away. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, first, God explains His love to people. Never forget God's love in any season. Remember how much God loves you. How many times He told you that He loves you. Um, but the people doubted his love. They argued with God. Um, he tries to he tries to expose and confront. I believe to bring a change. He even says, "I want to bless you, but you're you're not giving me any offerings. There's nothing I can. You're greedy. Why do I want to bless that? You're going to keep it to yourself." Um, they still doubted his love. But remember that this generation, they're out of exile. They're in freedom. Yes. God has brought them out of exile. Yeah. Yeah. And they're complaining. <laughs> they're complaining. Yeah, God, no boy. That's the truth. Yeah, no they're, they're not thankful for, for where they are. Yeah. They're still looking back wow. and be like, yeah. what? We have gone through too much. That's good. Wow. How many, like Meliana said last night, how many of you guys know when you complain? I mean, when you complain about the wilderness, you're going to be stuck there for 40 years. God says, I'll take you there for 11 days. But you're complaining. Yeah. How many of you know when you guys focus on the storm, you begin yeah. to sink? Yes. Focus on Jesus. Yeah. Remember why you started. Remember your purpose during this yeah. time. Don't ask those faithful questions of why me? Because God says, why not you? I have trusted you with this. And God, I'm telling God, I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you down, God. Whatever it takes, I am willing. I am willing to be that sacrifice for you, Lord, because you have already done everything for me. You have done so much. Even if you've done nothing else, I have enough to keep going. Wow. Yeah. Um, but they're complaining. They're com they just keep looking back. And I get trauma. I get PTSD. You know, it can, it can keep you from moving on. Yeah. But there's yes. healing. Oh, you gotta yes. trust the Lord yes. in this process. Yes. You gotta yes. keep coming. If it doesn't come one day, you're yes. like, okay, just keep, take yes. one more step. Yes. One more day. Yes. Just keep going. Do yes. not give up. Do not give up because you had a bad day because healing is not linear. I'm telling you, healing is, you're gonna have good days and you're gonna have bad days. Yeah. Yeah. 
But one day, I mean, the clouds are going to clear up, the sun's going to shine. Think of it that way, just one day. God is, he's, he's doing a work in your life. And he's in charge, so trust that God's going to bring you out of the exile. Amen? Amen. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, Malachi, let's jump to Malachi 3, excuse me, 3, um, 13 through 14. Um, imagine God's heart during this time. He's trying to explain to them what he's doing and how hurt he is that his people are saying, no, you don't love us. And God's like, look what I have done. Come on. He's, I mean, I, I just imagine God so broken. Like, how can you say I don't love you? I'm working so hard for you. God is still pursuing them. Yes. I mean, um, let's read on and I'll show you what God does. Malachi 3, 13 through 14. You have said several things about me, says the Lord. But you say, what do you mean? What have, you, what have we said against you? You have said, what is the use of serving God? What have we gained by obeying his commands or trying to show the Lord of heaven's armies that we are sorry for our sins? God spoke a word in Malachi 400 years. He was silent. But God was still working. Amen? Sometimes we'll get impatient. I mean, remember, God doesn't have a time. You are limited on time. But God's, he's still making things come to pass. He's not worried about time. Right. God can make things happen at any moment. Right. Right. He wants to prepare you so that you don't throw away that lesson, whatever it is that you're hoping for and praying for. Mm -hmm. well, could it be that God knows what's best for you? God knows you better than you know yourself. He knows what you need to yeah. go through. Right. He knows what you need in your life. He knows what needs to exit your life. He knows what you deserve. Come on. Amen? we got to trust God in this process. Yeah. And I know it's easy to say trust God. And you walk out here, yo, trust God, trust God. And then, I mean, something bad happens. Yeah. What do you do then? Yeah. Trust God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I may not feel good. I'm to trust God. Yeah, you may not feel good, but there's purpose yeah. for every season. Yeah. God can use yeah. everything. Yeah. Everything that the enemy meant for evil, he will turn it around for the good. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. 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 My God is good, and my God will never fail. Yeah. If you feel like you're in a deficit right now, that means God's not done. You're yeah. still breathing. God's still working. God doesn't end in a deficit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, poor Joseph yeah, gets thrown in. He doesn't do anything wrong. He just gets rejected by his family. He gets yeah. thrown in jail. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine how defeated Joseph felt? Yeah. I mean, two years he had to spend here for nothing off of a lie. Yeah. But God worked in him. Look what Joseph did. He saved a nation from hungry, from going hungry. Yeah. Like God, God can use anything. Yeah. But if you give up on him, you won't see your full potential. You won't see what God can do. Yeah. You won't see the healing done through you. Right. Um, hardships, they result in freedom, courage, joy, peace, everything God has to offer. Yeah. Um, and another thing, let me see if I wrote it up. Um, but then, yeah, God speaks. I already talked about that when He says, "I want to bless you, but you don't serve me. You don't. You don't give your own your tithes. You don't act in faith. You don't even believe that I'm working for you." <clears throat> you say there's no difference between the wicked and the serving. Um, but check out Malachi three eighteen. Then again, you will see the difference between the righteous and the wicked, because those who are served God and those who do not. Uh, yeah. You know who's saying that it's no use to serve God? <laughs> Those who don't serve God. Right. Yeah. Because they don't experience the blessings. They just right. see what you have to do, what yeah. they should be doing, they, what what God, what they think God wants to do without yeah. consulting God. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. I see a difference between the wicked and those who serve. Yes. I do today. Right. Um, Malachi 4. Malachi is such a short book, but it's so, yes. I mean, it's yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. I was looking at this world and I'm like, what in the world? what's wrong with these people? <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> but he's, I mean, um, like I said, I'm on, on social media, so I don't, I get a lot of non-believers messaging me. Right. Um, looking for an argument, yeah. <laughs> but I won't, I will not argue. Right. They don't need an argument to believe God, right? Exactly. They need right. an encounter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Um, <laughs> Malachi 4 2. But you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness, will rise with healing in his wings. 
and you will go free, leaping with joy like yeah. calves led out to pasture. Yeah. On the day when I act, you will tread upon the wicked as if they were dust under your feet, yes. wow. says the Lord of heavens and armies. Amen. Yes, Isn't that a good word? Yes. Malachi 4, 5. Yes. Look, I am sending you the prophet Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord arrives. So prophetic is live and well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> prophet Elijah is prophet in this church. Today out in this world, the prophet Elijah is here prophesying. And look what he's doing. His preaching will turn the hearts, hearts of fathers to their children yeah. and the hearts of the children to the fathers. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> God is up to something, right? Because prophecy, I mean, you see every day um, people getting saved from the prophetic. Yeah. So with your anointing, with the prophet Elijah speaking through you, you're going to go out in this world and you're going to prophesy. And you're going to prophesy like God has spoken Genesis. Um, Genesis, I didn't write down the scripture. Um, Adam and Eve, they had ate the fruit. Um, and they're hiding from God. God comes down, which I can imagine, right? <laughs> Did the one thing that God uh, asked you not to do. Um, and he comes and he's, he's looking for them and he says, where are you? They, they start a conversation. I thank God that he's not coming down. I mean, he came down later in the night. He knew what happened. He knew what they did. But he's still not, you did this and that was wrong. I told you not to do this. That's, yeah. that's not what God did. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you what God did. God said, Adam put on his clothes and he yeah. says, because we were naked. And God says, who told you you were naked? Right. Yeah. Right. So, like God has said, we're going to go out to this world and we're going to tell him who told you you were naked. Who put that shame on you. Right. Who told you that you were not good enough. Who told you that you have to live with that disease. Yeah. Because my God says, in Jeremiah 29, 11, I have plans to prosper you and I'll yes. harm you. Yes. Plans to give you yes. hope and a future. Yes. Come on. You're continuing to grow with God. He's continuing to give you all this demolition to mature in you. I mean, I'm just so excited for what everyone's going to go out and prophesy. You're going to see salvations like mine. <laughs> My salvation. There's people desperate like me that need a prophetic word. And we, the church, we have to, we can't condemn them. We can't condemn them. Right. We gotta tell them who told you you were naked. Right. My God yeah. has love to offer. My God has prosperity yeah. and yeah. healing. My God is here for you. And above all things, my God loves you. Right. Amen. Thank you guys. How do you follow that, right? You know? My goodness. Who told you? Wow. Oh, that's an awesome, yes, powerful word. Thank powerful. Wow. Yeah. 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 Can I say something? Yeah, absolutely. There's some, I mean, I'm just sitting there reeling on, on, on truth. I hope you caught this. Yes. Because Teresa said something that, that I want to come up here and take the mic from her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I had to hold my hat and use my fruit of self control, you know. But she said something that the snake come out of the fire and bit Paul's hand. Mm -hmm. And I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that text in Acts 28. Is it Acts 27, 28? And, and that same hand healed. Yeah. And I was sitting there and the Lord spoke to me and he's saying, this is why you're going out of the exile. Right. And the place that you've been bit Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to use that yeah. place that you have been to heal others. Come on. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, if I just came to church just for that, I mean, I'm running on that right now. Yeah. And and how many in this room have been bit oh, by life, yeah. by life, yeah. by life, yeah. by life, yeah. and bit by the enemy? Have been bit by the enemy? I mean, here and what was Paul doing? He was he was bringing up wood. He brought up sticks. He was actually serving. Yeah. He was actually building a fire. Yeah. Here we are building a fire to keep warm the people of God. Yeah. And then we get bit. Yeah. Right? And of course she yeah. shakes it off. And, yeah. But the thing is that place where the enemy tried to poison him, that place where life tried to poison him, yeah. became is that very hand, the hand that healed yeah. the island of Malta. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says, it says that he, they brought all the sick yeah. on the island of Malta and Paul healed them all. Yeah. Yeah. all of them. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Just think about it. We, everybody in this room, we've all been wounded. Yeah. Yeah. 
But that same hand can heal all the two Teria, let's give Priest another hand. What a great uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, I'm gonna say a big word, exegesis of yes. the book of Malachi. Yes. I mean, you broke it down, bro. Yes, that you was did. great. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Mom and Dad. Jesus. Grandma yes. and Grandpa. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, Glory, Lord. Yeah. I, uh, wow. Amazing. Hey, we're going to receive an offering um, today, this morning, and, and um, I asked Father John and, and, uh, if I could do the if I could do the honors of, of receiving the offering and, and just talk to you about something that really changed um, it really changed my wife and I's trajectory on giving um, because how many know that that um, that oftentimes you're you know the Bible says. Uh, give and it shall be given. You want to hear what I said? I said, give and it shall be given. A good measure. Press down, shaking together, and running over. But with with the measure that you give, you shall receive. Amen. And and you know, over in the book of Genesis, um, Abram, uh, his name was Abram at the time. God had not renamed him Abraham. Um, but over in the book of Genesis, Abram um, is leaving his father's house. In, in chapter 12 and God gives him a promise and he tells him this promise he says listen he goes I want you to go to a land that I'll show you and he says I'm going to bless you and I'm going to bless your people I'm going to bless the nations that bless you that's why it is so important that the church realizes that any any government official that is against Israel we don't vote for did y'all hear what I said yes. 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 Come on. Yes. amen because of that promise right there Right. I will bless every nation that blesses you. Um, yes, 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 right. yes, yes. Y'all hear me? Yes. Because yes. it's a covenant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a, and, and and then he goes on to say, I'll curse every nation that curse you. Mm -hmm. Go on. Amen. So there's a two-edged sword there, right? But then he begins to make promises to God and, and our, our pro promises to Abram in that in that verse. And and then of course, you know, Abram. Uh, Abram begins to, to travel. He just goes. And I love that kind of faith, man, where, where he says, hey, I want you to leave your father's house. I want you to leave Laban. I want you to leave everything behind you. And I, or, or, I'm sorry, his father, was it Laban? Um, anyway, his, I would say, I want you to leave your father, and I want you to go to a place where I'll show you. And he just goes. I love that kind of faith, man, where you just say, you know what? Okay, all right, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to go, right? Amen. And, and so he leaves and, and he begins to live and he takes his nephew with him a lot. And, you know, of course, we know the story about Lot and how, you know, Lot was a hot mess. You know, he, you know, he's, um, he gets to a place where the, the two, the, the two families are too big for each other. And uh, Abram says, Hey, um, Lot, I want you to pick the land wherever you want. Just pick whatever you want. Just, just look around you and pick it, right? And he said, I'm going to take the country over there. And Abram said, I'll tell you, okay, then I'll go this way. You go that way, I'll go this way. We separate. And then um, God begins to share with Abram one more time. He says, listen, I'm going to give you this land. All of it's going to be yours, right? And, and then his nephew Lot gets in trouble. He was always in trouble. That guy, man, he, he must have been a brat or something, man. But Lot begins to get in trouble and 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 the nation where he lives in Sodom um, is taken by uh, their five kings, right? And five kings are, 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 uh, have come in and they've taken the nation of Sodom and they've kidnapped his lot and his family. That's his, that's his nephew. So Abram does something that's really interesting and I wanna just tie something in with this for you today in, in, the, in, in, the, um, in, in the spirit of giving. Because what Abram does at that point, he takes those five kings, and I, Abram must have been a bad dude, because he whooped five kings, amen, and went and got his, his nephew back, and then just took all their stuff, too. I love that, man. You know, that, I, 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 there's an old song we used to sing, I went to the enemy's camp, and I took back what he stole from me, you know, 
hey, you know what? I, I, I love that song because I played that out of my head, you know? Because, you know, I have past. And so when, when, you know, when you have a past like I have, you know, you think about people that stole something from you and then you go back and you steal something from them, you know, right? But you don't just, you don't go get what you got from what you had back. You just take everything else that you want to do, you know? But that's what Abram did. He went in and he, 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 he took all of their stuff and he said, I'm taking your money, I'm taking your, your goods, I'm taking everything that you have. But he stopped and he perceived that there was a man of God and his name was Melchizedek. And he stopped there and the Bible says that Melchizedek blessed him. Blessed him. He was the king of Salem. It was interesting about Melchizedek because you read about him in the book of Hebrews as well. Um, but but when he blessed him, he gave him, the Bible says he gave him a tenth of all. Or that was the institution of tithing, really, the tenth. Amen. He gave him a tenth of all. And you know, as you read that, that the corresponding verses that, that, that are attached to that, you see that after Abram stopped and gave the king of Salem, amen, or the king of peace, Amen. He gave him an offering. He was willing to say, you know what? I want to give you a tenth of what I have. I want to give you something that I that that that, that would belong to me. Amen. Because I, I got it rightfully. I want to give to you something. And the very next chapter in the Bible, amen, in, in uh, chapter 15. Here, here's what it says. Yes. It says. Verse, uh, uh, if you look up to verse 14, uh, uh, or chapter 14, verse 20, it says, um, it, it, it says this, it says, And blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand, and he gave them a tithe of all. Now look at verse 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your yes. exceeding great reward. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me seeing I go childless? It was almost as if that the offering that Abram was willing to give freely, amen, sealed the covenant with God. Right. It was almost like you know in the book of Cornel, when in the book of Acts, when when uh, uh, Sister Teresa read just the, the chapter before that, yeah, the chapter before that, but over in the book of Acts, when Cornelius gives offerings and, and it says that he gave alms and, and and what does it say? It says that that God spoke and said it has become a remembrance or a memorial. Amen. Your your offering has become a memorial to God. Amen. Sometimes we remind God by our giving. Right, right. We remind God of the covenant yeah. that he made with us. Yeah. I don't know how many years it was between chapter 12 and chapter right. 15, but it was probably a few years where Abram probably had forgotten some of the promises and some of the things that God had told him. He was just living life. He was trying to save his nephew and all those things. But God says, because you were willing to give yes. to this man that you had no clue who he was, no right. that. But because you were willing to give something amen, of yourself, he said, I'm going to renew the covenant. I'm going to, I'm going to sit. And, and he didn't just renew the covenant. He made a blank covenant. Remember, he said, I want you to take a heifer. I want you to take a turtle dove. And he said, I want you to split them in two. And in the evening, God walked between them with a fire pot. And he sealed the deal. Amen. Yeah. Right there with Abraham. And so I said all that to say this. When we begin to be generous with our money, oh, yeah. when we're generous with our with our finances, especially after a word like that, right. you know, yeah, right. yeah, you know, it, it, I'm telling you, at at, uh, at at Maui this this year, and you know, if you've never been to Maui, they receive an offering yeah. often, two or three times, okay, two or three times during the services. But, but what I've learned is this, that when we begin to sow into the word, yeah. amen, when we begin to say, God, I want to remind you of what you told me about the word that was just preached. So I'm going to give to this, amen. And when we begin to do that, all of a sudden it becomes a memorial to God. God says, I remember. Let me, let me renew the covenant with you, amen. How many want a covenant renewed? Amen. 
So we're going to pray over the offering. I don't. I, I think uh, uh, giving online. Please. Giving online. We can give online right here. Yeah. Uh, yes. Online at the Citadel Church. You can do the text. Um, the church center app is so easy. Even I did it this morning uh, while I was sitting at, at Papa John's house and gave because I, I, I held my phone up last night and I was like, man, I'm trying to get on there and I couldn't get on because my, 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 you know, my internet is not very good. So uh, I, I gave this morning, but, but the church app, if you don't have that church center app, uh, load it and then just type in the Citadel and it'll go right to the church. Cash, yeah. 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 Or if you need an envelope for cash or yeah. checks, uh, you know, Brother Robert or our usher, Brother Miguel, or Brother Robert have uh, envelopes. We just raise your hand if you need an envelope. Anybody need an envelope right here? Amen. Our sister here needs an envelope. Anybody else today? Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I just want you to raise your hand. Just want just everybody raise your hand today. I know maybe some of you are giving online or whatever, but I want you to just raise your hand. And I want you to just uh, just begin to proclaim this truth over the offering. Father, I give you this offering to renew the covenant that has been made with me and you. I want to be generous. I want to be a person that gives out of abundance. So, Father, I pray you would bless this offering as a sign of me stepping into the purpose and destiny of my life. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Go ahead. Um, so yesterday yeah. we were speaking about our loved ones. Yeah. My son was being attacked by a coyote. Oh wow! Praise God! 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 Praise and he's okay. Amen. Amen. Because at that time we were praying for him. Amen. I had no clue who we were praying for, but you did. Amen. And God protect you. Thanks, Father. Amen. Amen. God is faithful. All right. You know, at this time, um, I want to introduce our brother Michael. Um, Michael and Monique are, are great um, young people for God, man. Their, their passion is just overflows. Amen. Um, They've been in our church for, for several years, uh, you know, about five or six, huh? seven years, something like that. A while, huh? yeah. eight years, yeah. Wow. Uh, but you know what I love about uh, these two is, is you know, our church uh, is made up of a lot of people like me, you know. They don't, they didn't, they, they didn't come from a polished lifestyle of, you know, just, you, you know, uh, straight out of the, you know, uh, 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 out, of, out of the preacher cycle, but they just they came from a, a life of you, you know of, of pain and, and you know a life of addiction and, and things like that, and uh, God just radically changed their life, you know. Uh, and uh, these two, you know, um, they're very humble. Um, uh, he's an Oregon Ducks fan, and I don't know about that, but you know, <laughs> but other than that, he's a nice guy. No, I'm just <laughs> and, uh, but uh, but you know what? Uh, they're very humble and. and uh, they'll they'll never tell you um, uh, a lot of the, the great things that they uh, they do for others. Amen. Their, their generosity is just overwhelming. Amen. Um, and uh, and because of that, God blesses them. Amen. And uh, you know they they've been the last few uh, few months they've been uh, able to go down to Mexico uh, to where it's, it's not safe. Um, it's not safe where they go. They showed me uh, things like bullet holes where they were preaching just a week before. Um, but they go there anyway and they minister, they minister the gospel. And uh, and man, I, I'm just so excited that they got to come with us. Yeah, this the they, devil tried to block it in every, every way. They made their own way. But they made their own way. And you know what? 
God has just uh, God has just been so faithful. So we can just give it up for Brother Mike. Please. Thank you, Brother Mike. Thank you, Brother Mike. Good morning. It is an honor to be here, uh, the privilege of uh, being here, uh, being able to speak and uh, give a word to this conference, uh, this conference, uh, the prophetic conference, and the title is uh, The Exile is Over. Um, it, 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 is, it is an honor to come all the way from California, uh, especially with my pastors uh, and family that we know, uh, uh, Dr. Harkey and Sister Liliana. Uh, that they go to our church uh, and oh wow amazing and and we we we're just so happy we're so so happy being here and I just want to introduce my wife uh, Monique uh, when we get together she's been she's been with me in the bad goods and she uh, she has been with me in Mexico um, uh, just she knows Spanish but it doesn't look like she does it but uh, but she does know. And, and, and it's just, it's amazing how God has just moved in us, uh, how we've been so humble. And, and it, it's, it's our heart desire to just speak His word and be moved uh, by Him because there's a lot to do in, in, in this world. Uh, uh, heaven is not made just for me, it's made for all of us, for and more families that, that we have. Uh, but I want to do something, something different that, that the, the that the Lord has been moving at me. Um, I know that we hear messages, and it's a, a, a message that we heard last night. It was really amazing that, that my pastor, that message, how, how just God brought that message. And then my sister over here, her message. Um, but sometimes we have so many things, but in order to that to release, we have to, uh, we have to let it go. We have to give our soul. We have to give our heart. We, we, we have to do that step. And, and I feel today in the morning, I just felt in, in my spirit for us to just let it go. Let it go. We did it yesterday the, with, with the word that my pastor brought. But I, I just want you, you to raise your hand, lift up your hand, and just open your heart and just breathe, breathe. Yes. Oh, you can feel the presence already. Yes. Just, I, I want you to just let it go. Let it go. Just let it go. Oh, Rabasan, Rabasirabaso. Oh, just release it, release it, release it. Because we come to church for something. We, we just don't come to sit down. We come and, and, and we're here because we're hungry. We're here because we want more. And that's the, I, I like the title of the Exiles Over. It is over, church. It is over. So just let it go. Let it go. You have to do your job, too. You have to release. You have to just let the presence of God just move in you. You have to. Yeah. Not looking, just close your eyes and, and just lift up your hands. Because you came for a move. You came to receive. You came for a new thing. You came to, to the Lord to speak to you. You came for the Lord to just move in you. Yeah. And just let it, let it. If you speak in tongues, just speak in tongues. This is a time where the Lord is going to move in your heart. It's going to move in your spirit. It's going to be moving, moving. Because you have came and you have told the Lord, Lord, I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more. I don't know how it's going to be, but I want more, Lord. I want more. I don't even know how to get to that, Lord Jesus. But I want more. I want more. Tell him, tell him. Chorro posanda rabasi kikipi rabaso. Oh, rabasanda rabasi. Oh, rabasanda rabasi. This is your time. This is your time. This is your time. Just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Just praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Oh, rabasanda rabasi. Chorro posanda rabasi. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus, he's right there, he's just waiting for you, also to open your heart, he's waiting for you, oh, 
Oh Jesus, just move, Holy Spirit. Move, Holy Spirit. Move, Holy Spirit. Oh Ravasa Daravasi. Oh Ravasa Dorovosi. Oh yes, Lord Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If you want more, press in. Press in. If you are more present, this is your time. I can speak his word. I can speak it. I can, I can tell you something. I can prophesy to you. I can, I, 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 Prophet Harvey can do it. My pastor can do it. So another, your, your neighbor can do it. But this is your time. Yeah. That's where you came. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. You yes. came, you drove over here yes, to receive, yes, to, to, to have what God has, to that time. But the Lord, yes. just yes, Jesus. Thank you. be like that yes, in the presence. Yes, Father. Oh, Rabasa, the Rabasi. Thank you That's the thing that, you know, when you're in his presence, yes, you know, he speaks, yes, he gives you a word. Yes, Jesus. He, his presence yes, just moves. Yes, God. It's, so, it's so beautiful when he moves. And that's, that's what we ask. Sometimes we tell the Lord, Lord, I wish I could just sit down next to you. I wish. I wish I could hear a word from you. I wish I could feel your presence. I wish I could hold your hand. I wish. That's why I tell you. Just release. Just, just be in the press with him. Just look if you're holding this hand. Oh, Rabasan Rabasi. Oh, Rabasan Rabasi. Because you have been going through so much. You have been pushing. You have been driving. Church, you have been pushing. That's why I say, and that's what the Lord told me to do this, to start with this. Because you're in your exile is over. Amen. Amen. Your exile is over, yes, church. Yes. Even if it doesn't look like, but it is over, church. Yes. It is over. You have your own way how to get close to the Lord. You have your own way how to speak to Him. Your exile is over. I'm not here just standing because I just want to be here oh, and speak a word. No. I want to get. I want to. Show you, I want to get you right there. Because your exile is over. Yes, Lord. Yes, oh God. Church. You know, when I was in the airplane, I told my pastor, I was like, I just closed my eyes. And I could literally, literally hear the church praying for wanting for more. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I could literally hear it. Yeah. And I was supposed to take a nap. <laughs> but the Lord didn't let me take a nap. Yeah. So that's what I just seen that. That's why I'm doing this. Because you want more. You want more. How to, how to get there to get that more? Lift up your hands. Let him. Yes, Jesus. Just open your heart. Yes, Jesus. If you don't do that, well, then how are you going to get more? How are you going to get served if you don't ask? How are you going to get served if you don't sit down? How? It doesn't make no difference spiritually and morally. If you do, if you came to church to receive more, it's the same spiritually. I want more. Yes, Jesus. I want more. Yes, Lord. Tell him, I want more. Oh, no, my son, that I must see. Oh, Lord yes, Jesus. Jesus. I just love his presence. Yes, oh, God. I love his presence. Yes, Jesus. It's, it's a way of. Jesus. We can read the word, but still we have a little trouble. Because. It's just, I don't feel it. Oh, but we just lift up our hand. Yeah. And we just give it and cry to them. It's just like, boom, let it go. 
He just starts yes. delivering. He starts healing. He starts doing everything. So, so I just, man, I don't even want to, want to cut this. I, I really feel His presence. Yes, Lord. I feel it so strong. Yes. I feel it. I feel it. Yes, Lord. Oh, there's a purpose why yes, Father. you came to them in the morning. There's a purpose. Yes. Because you want more. Yes, Jesus. There's a purpose you ditch school. Because <laughs> you want more. You want more. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, there's a purpose. Yes, Lord. Yeah. 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 But just keep yeah. pressing in. Keep pressing in. Amen. This is a prophetic conference. This is a, a, a prophetic act that you guys are doing. And, and, and it's something different that I I just felt I felt in the presence of the Lord to do this because you guys are hungry. Oh, you guys are really hungry, and yeah. God is going to move so in a mighty way in your guys' life. And and this church is not going to be big enough. Yeah. It's not going to be big enough. Yeah, it's going to grow. Yes, this Lord. church is going to grow. I already yes, sense Lord. the fire that's being poured in you guys. I already sense the spirit yes, so just doing something Thank in you guys Jesus. so hard. Yes, so I already God. sense it. I already sense yes, people Lord. right here that wants to take my microphone already. Because <laughs> the Lord is already doing that. It's already doing that. And yes. you're like, wow, I can't believe what I just felt right now in this moment. I was staring at him, but at the same time, I was feeling this. I was feeling this. And, and that's the that's the time that we're at right now. That there's no limit of his presence. There's no limit. Wherever you're at, just go. Go. Don't stop. Go and receive and just be free to receive his presence. If you don't know how, Lord, I don't know how, but I'm here, Lord. I want to receive that. I want to just receive that little touch that I encounter. And that just was just, boom. You would just launch. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. I just want to read a little bit of Exodus. Chapter 5. And I just, this message is prophetic, a prophetic message. As you go, I just want to pray. Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for your presence. And we just thank you for what you're going to do. Speak through me. Use my word, your words through me. And just go ahead. I decrease so you can increase. Yes, Lord. And speak to the church, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Jesus. Exodus chapter 5, verse 3. If you're there, say amen. Amen. It says, But Aaron and Moses persisted. Oh, Lord Jesus. The God of Hebrews has met with us. They declare. How many have felt that the Lord has met with us? In this prophetic conference. And there's more that is going to be happening. And it says verse, on the same verse 3, but where it says, so let us take three days journey into the wilderness so we can offer sacrifice to the Lord our God. How amazing that God gave me this word and how many days is this prophetic conference? Three days, church. Oh, yeah. yeah. Three days. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't go and search, oh, let me see what, what I'm going to preach or what, what, what I'm going to speak. The Lord just confirmed, he just said, Three days. Yeah. Three days. And it says that Moses and Aaron were persistent. Yeah. Were persistent. And, and, and they want to take a three day journey in this wilderness to sacrifice. Church, you're there. Yeah. You're there, church. Amen. This is your three days. Yes. Come on. Don't lose it. 
Don't waste time. Yeah. It's your three days that the Lord has ordained to happen in this month. Yeah. And it's yeah. your three days. All the things that you've been crying. All the things that you've been going through. The things you've been going through, church. Come on. Yeah. Don't waste those three days. Because the Lord said that this three days, he's going to move in this three yes. days. Come he's going to shake you in this three days. Oh. He's going to deliver you through yes. this three days. He's going yes. to so well. move in a way that you're going to know him in a different way. Yes. Oh. That you're going to come out and you're going to be like, oh, I'm not in your level. No more. The Lord has moved in my life in this three days. That you don't even know. I sacrificed. I have put everything on the side. Things that have held me back. Things that have just pulled me back and told me that no, you're not worthy. You're not this. You're not that. You know what? Your family's not going to do nothing. It's not going to change. You know, the, the Lord is not going to use you. The Lord is not going to speak to you. The Lord, no. In these three days, it's the three days that you and the Lord just. Connect. This moves in this three days. Yeah. How you set up by your brother yes. in this three days. Yes. And it was the first day. Jesus. It was the first day. Yes, Lord. Just imagine the second day. Yes. And you get more. Just imagine the third day. Yes. The Lord, how he's going to move. Come on. Yeah. So it says, after uh, offer sacrifice to the Lord our God. And then he says, if we don't, he will kill us with the plant or with the sword. He says. And that's what the enemy wants to do. But just church, three days. This is your three days. Just your three days just to move in the presence of the Lord. Forget everything. Just release everything. Yeah. Come on. Because you're asking for an increase. You're asking, you're tired. You're tired. Amen. And the Lord says, I will restore your strength. Yeah. And I, 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 I'm going to drink some more water. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. So don't hold back, church. Don't hold back. Just keep pushing. Keep pushing. Because the, the Lord has a table prepared for you. Yeah. I know you have been pushed. And it has felt like, oh, I, I can't do it no more. The Lord, yeah. you've been pretty quiet. You've been pretty quiet in this season. But the Lord says, I have not been quiet. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just been preparing for you for these three days, mm -hmm. says the Lord. Church, the Lord is so amazing. He has moved in our lives in a big, mighty way. And even if there's times that I want to, I'm like, Lord, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. But the Lord, he, he just, with his presence, he just moves and, 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 and that's why I, I, I just let myself go. I let myself go because I know that his presence is going to take over. I know that his presence is, is going to give me the answer. He's going to rise me. I know that his presence is, is, is going to be my, my answer, my solution in my life. My, he's going to be my wisdom. He's going to be, be my all, church. Yes, yes, yes. I know that his presence has all that I need because he's my creator. He's my deliverer. He's, he's the one that knows me best. He's the one that knows everything, my feelings, everything inside of me, church. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I don't hold back. Yeah. Even if it feels heavy, I just don't hold back because I'm like, where am I gonna go? Yeah. What am I gonna do? Yeah, the world does 
not going to give me the answers. Come on. He's not going to give it to me. Google is not going to give it to me either. Right, right, right. It's the worst thing that you could go through. Yeah. There's times. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> there's times that my wife, if there's a little something that she goes to Google and she's like, oh, we got we to gotta go to the doctor. I'm like, Hey, calm down. <laughs> calm down. Yeah. Google is not the thing. No. It's the Lord. Yeah. It's the Lord. Yeah. He's the one, church. Yeah, He's you. the one, church. Yes. But the amazing thing about um, this passage is that Aaron, Aaron and Moses persisted. Yeah. Where are you? Have you been persistent? Come on. Ask yourself, come on. Have I been persistent? Yeah. If you haven't, persist, church. Persist. Because that's what's going to get you to those three days. That's where you're going to just just press. Yes. Yes. Oh, I just thank the Lord for that. I just thank. I just thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. I just thank you for his word. Lord, we thank you. We praise you, Lord Jesus, for this time. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus, Jesus. 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 I just said, I don't know who. uh, if my pastor is the Lord, or um, just a, a song. Um, I just, I really feel my spirit yes. to just get in his presence. Yes. He already said in his word, he already prophesied on his word for three days. I feel like the Lord wants to minister. Yeah. In your guys' heart. Yes. Yes. So I just, I just, uh, if you could stand up. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Yes, Lord. Lift up your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Ramasana. You speak in tongues. Hallelujah. Or is he in his presence? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Don't look at your name. This is your time. Persist. 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 Oh, Rabasa. Get more, church. Get more. Persist. More, more, church. More, more, church. Oh, Rabasanda Rabasi. Oh, my sense is spirit. Oh, he's going through every aisle. Oh, Rabasanda Rabasanda Rabasi. Oh, don't hold back. Don't hold back. This, this is your day. This is your time. This is your this is your morning. Oh Rabasanda Rabasa. Shuru Musanda Rabasa. Sarabasanda Rabasa. Oh Rabasika Pirabasa. Just the Lord, tell the Lord, Lord, I'm here. Lord, I'm here, Lord. I'm ready. I'm ready. I receive you.
Lord says that He's going to heal. He's going to restore your Word that 
was spoken in this contemporary church for the healing and the Speaking right now. Because Paul, you 
get completely free. And what is going to happen is all of a sudden, there's going to be a change that happens. Um, you were 17, 16, around 16, 17 years old, where, where people really bullied you in a place and put you in a place where you were physically, Physically, yeah, no, physically hurt me, but and I heard the Lord say that today is the day that I'm undoing the trauma of that year of your late teens, because I'm healing you from the top of your head down to the sole of your feet. Put your hands in Jesus' right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare over Paul that he's walked in here one way, he will walk out of here another way by the power of your word. I thank you right now that a cycle, even the cycle where he has even been in areas where even physically has affected his balance, even his ability to walk, and believe and think consciously, that his ability to process, you are healing him from the top of his head down to the sole of his feet. Even the injury that he suffered when he fell out of the tree at 10 years old, you are healing him right now in the name of Jesus. Father, touch him in Jesus' name, never to be the same again. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Give God a shout of praise for him. As, as uh, Sama was praying for you and Brother Michael was praying for you, um, you know, I, what I saw, again, I, I, I'm a seer, so let me explain what I'm talking about. There's a, there's a restaurant that I go to that, that out in front of the restaurant, in front of the counter, there's like this treasure chest. And, and you know, when the kids are done eating, Mom and dad will let them go to the treasure chest and they'll just pull out whatever they want. A sucker or a little toy or a trinket or whatever. And the, and the Lord, I said, what, what does that mean, Lord? And the Lord said, you, because of what is happening in these three days, you are going to experience a place where you have this treasure. The Bible says we have this treasure in jars of clay to prove it is all surpassing knowledge. From God, not from us. But you have this treasure that that people are going to come and want to pull from you, and and he, and it's going to come so miraculously that I I literally saw you at the chest first, and I'm like, you know, he he is pulling from it, but then the chest turns around and you say, now what I what I've got, I'm going to give. And, um, and I believe that God is is placing you in a in a place where. People are going to glean from you. People are going to take yes. the treasure yes. from you. And, and wisdom. You're going to have wisdom. Amen. Uh, your name's Paul. That's not an accident. Amen. You're going to have wisdom. Amen. Amen. Wisdom to navigate. Yeah. Wisdom to do things that, that, that you're even going to scratch your own name. <laughs> you know? Um, but that's, that's what the Lord will show you. Yes. So Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to introduce my next speaker, but yeah, maybe you just come up as a one on one quick with you. Just look your just look your hands. Yeah. So I can get one of the guys to stand behind yeah. here. I get it and you can shake it. I just heard the word you were you were the Lord highlighted you actually I as I got done praying for you. You were the Lord highlighted you as one of the guys that was going to stand next to you. Yeah. 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 And this is definitely the Lord showed me. Over the years, your experience in, in within the contents of the church is leadership, even especially specifically women that were in leadership did not value you. Did not value you because of, they just saw the outward that they didn't see you. To end your cry that you really were there to want to serve, you were really there to want to help. And it's sort of, and so what has happened is because of your disposition, your personality, a lot of times when that happens, there's a, I mean, you, you won't you won't just blow up or have a meltdown, but you'll regress, you'll go back and stuff, or just, or just shut down. I've walked into this from 
Que se ahogó. Pa, pa, pa. I got my gossip. I never told you that. I never told you to share that. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to heal you from the wound. That specifically, specifically, that, that Asher's wife, I mean, specifically, I mean, heal you legs and run out of your own If you would just let me come over here. Put your hand on your heart for me. Put your hand. And you're going to walk out of here. You're going to walk out of here this afternoon. And as if the weight has left you. Thank you, Father. Because you are one of my chosen daughters. I'm raising up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm raising up a company of Deborah's here in Tucson. That is, that has to be in specific area. They're going to prophesy into the political yes. realm. Yes. They're going to prophesy into the spirit realm and bring healing and life to the city. There'll be a day, daughter, when you'll be, when we, you'll be standing behind a, a podium, speaking to a group of women who have come out of prostitution, and you will speak the word of the Lord. Their heart, mind, and trauma will be healed at the sound of your voice. And the reason why the enemy, the enemy, literally, it wasn't just the person, it wasn't just the pastor's wife. The reason why they tried to label you or put you in a place where they felt that you were not worthy because you didn't fit in, the Lord says, I'm going to redeem all that and I'm going to turn that around for my glory. Yes. Father, from the top of her head, to the soul of the feet, touch her right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, never to be the same again. There it is. God is touching you right now. Give God a shout of praise in the house. Hallelujah. And we thank Brother Michael. Can we thank Brother Michael? We make the one standing. I mean, God, I know we've gone over time, but that's okay. It's a prophetic conference. You never know what happens. You know. Yeah. You know. And here's here. I'm so excited because Thank you. Um, just 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 to kind of build up to our next guest. And I know it's supposed to be Nora, but um, Millian and I, uh, you know, I had a I had a little. There, I had a history here. The history here. I'll, I'll share a little bit tonight. But there's a history here in Tucson. And uh, when we, when in 21, when we felt the need, you know, say that, we felt the need. Because I, 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 I actually, I didn't get a vision or a dream or a prophecy regarding Tucson. I felt the need of the Lord. Yeah. I felt the need. You know, Jesus needed to go through Samaria. Yes. I, I needed to come back to Tucson. Yeah. I felt the need that God had something there. And when I, when I got here, and um, I felt that, and I couldn't believe it, because our next guest, I had her number on my cell phone after several years. Still had it. Yeah. And I had her number, and so I called her and her husband and said, hey, listen, I'm gonna, we're going to plan a work. We'd like you to be a part of it. Amen. And I have to tell you, their, their family, most of you are related, half of you, <laughs> and their family, and and their and their children and her husband have been nothing but a blessing to me and my wife. I mean, the, the, the Citadel Church, all that you're seeing, all that you're going to have in this today, would not be possible without them. And um, I'm I'm not trying to boast. <laughs> uh, they're one of the most precious people on the planet. They're the great servants. Yeah. And so, what you're going to do? I want to introduce Ron and Bill Costa. Hallelujah, you may be seated. Hallelujah. So have you not, as you've heard, that exile is over. I believe that we are entering into an era where God's people will walk in our God-given identity and authority to see the kingdom of God established here on earth. And it's going to take each and every one of us to know who we are, 
so that we can know our rightful identity, so that we can walk in our rightful authority. And I know that you've heard it. I mean, it, it was just like a setup. God was setting us up. And even though we didn't know how, who was going to preach, when they were going to preach, but it was a setup by the Lord. Amen? Amen. And I just want, I want to just, it's not, we're not coming into a season. It's an era because there's a change that's happening all over, all over the earth that God is moving and he's using and he, and he chooses to use each and every one of us. But we have to, we no longer, you see, the church has been great in teaching about studying and teaching about praying and teaching about being faithful. They have been great at that. The only thing is we haven't been taught how to take our authority just like Jesus Christ did when he walked the earth and to begin to walk in our God-given authority so that we can see things change, people delivered, people set free. And that's where we're going. That's where God is saying, come on, people, come catch up. So we can learn by the example that Jesus gave us. He knew who he was and why he was sent to earth. Of course, um, Jesus came to preach the good news of the kingdom of God. Um, that's what he was here to do, according to Luke 4.43. Jesus came and made himself to be like us. He he had he made himself to have the restrictions of men, yet he had and walked with authority because he was showing us, I can do this, you can do this also. And he he was a, a man submitted to God, and he demonstrated what life could be like empowered by the Holy Spirit. You see, the good news of the, of the kingdom of God, he came to preach it upon the earth. And the good news was peace, reconciliation, grace, forgiveness, salvation, love. That's what we are called to do. We are called to bring in and release the kingdom of God in our atmosphere, in this world, on the earth. You see, Jesus got baptized and the heavens parted. And the Holy Spirit rested on him like a dove. And it, the Bible doesn't say that the Holy Spirit ever left him because he didn't. And it says that a voice from heaven came and said, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased, according to Mark 1, 9 and 10. But you see, even as Jesus was baptized by, by in water and by the Holy Spirit, so are we when we go and we get baptized in water, you know, by, uh, by a person, and uh, we accept the Holy Spirit into our lives, that same power that Jesus, that came upon Jesus, is upon us even now, and it's not because of what, who we are, what we do, it, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with God and that, that privilege, that gift that he has given us. You see, and that when, after Jesus was baptized and the Holy Spirit came upon him, that is when his ministry began. See, Jesus knew who he was and why he was sent to earth, but transformation comes in the encounter with the Holy Spirit that brings about change. Yeah. We want change. You know, the earth needs change. Everybody needs change. But that's where it's come. It comes from the power of the Holy Ghost. Do this, do that, and this role, and this, and this, and this um, order, then um, I'll do it. That's me. It's easy. I can follow that. But you see, Jesus didn't come to follow methods. You know what he did? He had an intimate relationship with the Father. Scripture tells us that he only did what he saw his Father doing. And he only said what he heard his Father saying. That's where we have to come in. Our relationship with the Lord, we need to know what God is saying and doing in our midst. It's not, okay, in years and years and years you're going to see this. No, what is God doing right now? Right now. Not only in my life, but in those around us. You see, we are here to minister to those around us. We are here to be the light. Every morning we pray, God, we are the light of the world. So come on, let's be the light. Let's make a difference. Let's proclaim the goodness of God here on earth to the people that are struggling and suffering. And just like Teresa said, you know, they're, they're looking for hope. There's no hope in this earth. But you know what? We are the ones God wants to use us to bring that hope. You see, Jesus, um, Scripture says, Jesus walked around releasing the goodness of God to everyone he came in contact with. And he didn't come to point fingers. He didn't say, excuse me, miss, you gotta, fit, you gotta stop doing this. No, he showed the goodness of God because yes. you know why? It's the goodness of God that, that causes people to repent, that hurts them. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. How are we gonna taste him? If, we, if we're, all we're doing is pointing fingers, it doesn't work that way. You're gonna point your finger at me, I'm gonna say, you know what? I don't have nothing to do with you. After God. But that's not my God. My God says, 
come. I love you. I want you. I want to restore you. I want to show you what I have for you. I have a future for you. It's because of who he is. You see, um, Matthew 9, 35 to 38 from the Passion Bible. It says, Jesus walked throughout the region with a joyful message of God's kingdom realm. He taught in the reading houses and wherever he went, he demonstrated God's power by healing every kind of disease and illness. He was spreading the good news of the kingdom of God. Guess what? That's our mission. That's our commission that we have to come, in, come into alignment with. Because we got to preach the goodness of God. You see, we, we need to learn to minister and walk from a point of authority. And Jesus is burning ministry. He said the best. Be thou made whole. Take up your bed. Walk. Then to a layman, he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He too ministered and spoke from a point of authority. And that's what we got to do. We don't come and say, beg God, oh God, if it's your will. We know his will. His will is to heal. His will is to save. His will is to, uh, uh, to deliver right now. And we have to come into authority. So when we speak to anybody, or even in the atmosphere that we're in, we com we command it to change because God has given us the authority according to His Word. Just as Jesus walked, we're supposed to be walking. The Bible said, or Jesus said, "What I do, you will do." But greater things. Come on, church. We're supposed to be walking the way Jesus walked and doing greater works. How? By knowing who we are. That's where it's going to get us. Because you know what? I have a question for you. Who does heaven know you as? Because let me tell you, God knew you before you were born. Amen. How? Who does he know you from? as? Jeremiah 1, 5 to 8 says, Before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, I had holy plans for you. A prophet to the nations. That's what I had in mind for you. But I said, this is Jeremiah, I said, hold it, Master God. Look at me. I don't know anything. I'm only a boy. How many of us are in the same in the same posture as that? Lord, who am I? I can't speak. I can't be in front of people. But he says, God told me, don't say I'm only a boy. I'll tell you where to go, and you'll go there. I'll tell you what to say, and you'll say it. Don't be afraid of a soul. I'll be right there looking after you. That's God's decree. You see, heaven knows who we are already. We just got to come and get into alignment with, okay, God, who does heaven know I am? It's not who I know I am. It's not what people know who I am, but God, who does heaven know who I am? Because when you begin to know who heaven knows you are, you begin to walk in your purpose. Because that your identity has lined up with your purpose, or your purpose lines up with your identity to know what God has in store for you. Just like Gideon, Judges 6.12, it says, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Again, Gideon said, pardon me, my Lord, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. How many of us feel that way? I am the least. How are you going to use me, God? And, and it, it didn't matter. God kicked him. That's how heaven knew Gideon as a mighty warrior. Even though Gideon was hiding and trying to uh, uh, prepare and trying to save for his family, trying to you know, do what he thought he had to do. But God, God sent an angel and said, mighty warrior. And look at how God used him. Why? Because he began to build a relationship with God, talking to him, asking him questions. God, prove yourself again, and God will do it. No, 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 one more time, God, I'm not sure. You see, because the insecurity that he had, God was okay with, because God was going to show himself to Gideon so that he can become the mighty warrior that God knew him as already. That's what we are. That's what we're doing. Okay, God, who am I? You know, that's why the enemy is coming against the world so hard through our identity. Why? Because if you don't know who you are, it doesn't matter. You're going to do what you're going to do. 
you. But if you know who you are and you know what you have been called for, you're going to have a purpose. When people have a purpose, they will do, they will succeed. They will live happy and joyful and blessed because they are fulfilling that purpose that has that God has already ordained for them. You see, when you're when you discover your God, God, God given identity, then you will begin to discover your purpose. We are to bring order into chaos. That's what we're called to do. So people can experience the goodness of God encountering the Father's heart through us. Okay? It's the goodness of God that brings people to repentance. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Showing up with the goodness of God in the midst of trouble, hopelessness, discouragement. Because God has a solution to every problem. Yeah. We are to bring the good news to those around us by asking the Holy Spirit for the solution so people can experience the goodness of God. We are the solution makers. Do you hear that? Yeah. We are the solution makers. Why? Because we're connected with a God that has all the solutions, all the all the, um, the answers to the, the problems that are happening all around. Just as they said, um, Pastor Steve said last night, he said the, the world goes to, to the programs of the world, and guess what? They go through the programs and they come out back into their stuff. Why? Because the church has the answer. The church should have the answer. And the answer is Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can deliver. He's the only one that can heal. He's the only one that can set free. It's not about me. It's about the God that is in me that is going to minister to those that I am around. No matter what they're in, no matter what they're doing, no matter what they've done, no matter what they look like. Amen? So we show up with the goodness of God in the midst of trouble. You see, we just have to surround ourselves with the Holy Spirit. Lord, what are you doing here? When a person is, is just giving you all the problems, just, just you know, talking to you, you're asking yourself right there with the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is always with you. You know, I, I don't get it. We always pray, Lord, Lord, come, Lord. We need you come, Lord. God's already here. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He's already here. So we just got to say, God, what are you doing? What are you doing right now in this place? What are you doing in my workplace? What are you doing in my family? What are you doing? This person is just talking to me, telling me all your problems. But Lord, what is the solution? What's the answer? And let me tell you, you will get the answer from the Holy Spirit. And what's going to happen is they're going to say, wow, how did you know that? I don't know. It was God. It came from God. Because we don't have the solutions. God does. But if we will just, just, just for a moment, just say, okay, God. And it doesn't have to be allowed. It's in our innermost being. Okay, God, what are you doing here? What do you want to do here? See, people do what they do because they haven't discovered who God says they are. They have, they have given into the life of the enemy that has brought shame and condemnation. That is not from the Lord. The Lord wants to heal them from shame and condemnation. You see, Proverbs 25, 11 says, A word spoken at the right time is like gold apples in silver settings. Yes, that's right. Could you have the word of the Lord at the right time? Yes. I'm going to tell you yes, because we are a prophetic people. Each and every one of us, the, pro the Bible proclaims it. He says, I wish that all men prophesied. So that means we can hear from God. And that means that we can open our mouth and say what God was God saying. And yes, sometimes we might be wrong. But what are the times that we're right? You know, that God heals, that God delivers, that God sets people free. The Lord puts his, his words in our mouths. Scripture says, look and see what he will say. But you see, so many of us don't do that. So many of us are just so caught up with what's happening right here, right now, that we don't just look. Okay, God, what are you doing? What are you saying? Find God's goodness anywhere. This is that. God, find God's goodness anywhere and everywhere because what you're looking for, you're going to find it. Everything points to the glory of God no matter what's Amen. happening. Amen. No yes. matter the darkest alley, yes. no matter what. Everything points to the yes. glory of God. Yes. And he's the answer. Yes. Romans 8.19, and I want you to get a hold of this. 
For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. The appearing of God's sons and daughters unveiled with the glory of Jesus Christ upon them. Christ's glory will come to us, enter us, fill us, envelope us, and then he will be revealed through us as partakers of the glory. Come on, the earth is waiting for us, for God's children to arise and to show forth his glory. It's time that the people of God stand up and take their authority. The earth and its people are waiting for the, for the God in you to show up. Did you hear that? The earth and its people are waiting for the God in you to show up. Because that will cause a change. Yeah. Trusting in God and trusting in the God that is in you. Yeah. Do you trust in the God that is in you? You know, uh, I, I remember years and years and years ago, we had a huge decision to make. And we didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. And I was praying to the Lord and I was asking the Lord, Lord, what do we do in this situation? Because it was scary and I did, it, was, it was huge. And the Lord asked me a question and he said, can you trust the God that is in you? Yeah. And my answer was, yes, Lord, I can trust you. And we made that decision. And let me tell you, it's been great. Thank God <laughs> that we made that decision. You know, I'm going to tell you, you've got to trust the God that is in you. Because yeah. he will never leave you astray. Yeah. So as I was um, preparing um, I had a vision, and the vision that I had was angels surrounding this place. It was just all around where the where the pews are, all around. And I was like, okay, Lord. And I saw them, and they were holding they were holding um, scrolls. And I was like, okay, Lord. And they were handing them to different people. God said, I'm commissioning them to hand deliver scrolls with to the people with purpose. But you know what? He also just gave me that. He doesn't only commission angels to go and bring about messages. He commissions them to, to help you accomplish your purpose. Because I'm not doing this by myself. I can't do it by myself. You know, but God sends his angels and he showed me a vision of this conference and the angels surrounding us because they are here to help us accomplish our purpose. See, God doesn't call the equipped. He calls, he equips the call. He equips who he calls. Yeah. And we, each and every one of us are called because he wants to use each and every one of us. We are, I pray this all the time, we are his mouthpiece. Yeah. We are. Yeah. We are his hand. We are his feet. We are who God is. Mm -hmm. So we need to let our, our light shine onto the world, showing that he is a great, loving, heavenly father that wants to show his goodness, his love, his reconciliation, his healing yeah. in the midst of yeah. hor horrible yeah. darkness. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only way, you know, sister, the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Yeah. Okay? So that we can give it out. He, he wants to use us. He wants to use us. He wants to use you. Will you allow him to? You know, I just, I just want to leave you with that. How, who does heaven know you are? Who? Who am I, God? Bring that question to the Lord. Yes. And watch him answer. Amen. And then go from there. Okay, God, if heaven sees me this way, okay, I'm going to start believing that I am going to see myself this way. Because the Bible says that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. How are you thinking in your heart about yourself? You know, we want to make a difference. Well, it starts with us first. We've heard that all our lives. It starts with us, and it does. You know, because we need to walk in our, our God-given identity yes. so that we can walk in our God-given authority. Amen? Yes. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. I tell you what, Veronica and Robert and their family, they have been such a blessing. As you all know, John and I travel so much. 
and every week we're in three or four different cities and when we started this church oh my god this family family have been such a blessing holding down the fort while we're traveling so it's just wonderful not let alone that was preaching you know it was so awesome wonderful anyway at the, this moment we wanted to let you guys know that we do have some a ministry that is available and i'm going to call up linda linda come on up here i wanted her to share uh one of the ministry that is available that we have every uh, morning and i wanted her to share a little bit a little bit about it before we move on to uh prophecy okay come on linda amen praise god how many of you know the power of prayer Amen. The whole body of Christ is called to prayer. The greatest example was our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He prayed three times in the gardens, and David said, I will pray in the morning, yes. in the evening, yes. and in the afternoon. Yes. So what excuse do we have? Right. Without prayer, there's no power. That's it. Jesus is powerful. That's it. The Christ in us is powerful. We have prayer Monday through Friday. We have a soaking time from 5.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. to 6 o'clock a.m. Yes. From 6 to 6.30, that's when we turn the heat on. Yes. We're not, <laughs> no, I'm serious. We use the word of God. We're, we're swinging the sword. Yeah. We're not praying, oh, bless me, yeah. bless that. We don't do that. We're praying the word of God, and we're praying for the city. God has given us a heart and a vision and a passion for souls. Yes. If you don't have that, you don't have the heart of God. Yeah. He's yeah. after souls. How does he reach souls? Through us. Yes. And then we say, Lord of the harvest, rest forth your labors yes. into the harvest field. Yes. For it is truly right with the labors yes. of you. Yes. This is us. Yes. We are called to pray. And I tell you, if we don't pray now, there's some stuff coming down the pipe That's it. you will not be prepared for. Yes. And when we pray, we also fast. And pray. Yes. We're keeping our bodies under subjection. We're not ignorant of the devil's devices. Mm -hmm. We use the total man. Mm -hmm. Will you not join us? It's, I tell you, all hands on deck. These are the days we're living on. Yeah. If yeah. we're the church, let's be the church. Yeah. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Let's redeem yes. the time. Yes. Amen. So there it is. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, teacher. She's a prayer warrior. Let alone a man, Veronica. Always does of the open it up every morning, and we pray yeah. from five thirty to six thirty every Monday to Friday. Why? Because it is vital. Yeah. I mean, a church that don't pray, what are you doing? Just right. gathering? Yeah. Come on! But that's why. I mean, we can preach, we can prophesy, but at the end of the age, yes. we can come before Him, and He can look at us. Depart from me. I never knew you. That's why we want that to encourage people to gather together and pray. Amen. Amen. That's the only way he will know us yes. intimately. Yeah. That's the only I love when you talk about being in the presence of God, you yeah. know, because that's what we need. Yeah. We tell you what, all our crisis, our problem will, I mean, right. I have to say, 99 or 100% will take care of it when we are in His presence. Amen. So that's why I want to encourage her. That is so important to me when I ask if she can come and share that because I know we can do the work of the ministry, do all kind of things. But if we don't pray, what are we doing? If we don't have the presence of God, what we are doing. Amen. So at this time, we are going to move on to prophesying on some of you. We'll see how long we can be able to do that because we there were a hundred over 100 people that have registered. So we want to take as much as we can to prophesy this afternoon and then we'll dismiss, come back tonight. I can't wait for my husband to preach tonight. Amen. I know you have a word that has been boiling in his heart. Amen. And of course, again, tomorrow we'll come, come back again and finish up prophesying. I think we're going to share a little bit and then prophesying on everybody. And we will prepare lunch for everybody that comes. Okay? God bless you. All right. Come on, John. Hallelujah. Come on and give God a shout of praise this morning. I'm so thankful for all our speakers. Pastor Lori, we're so thankful for you. Amen. Yeah, I'm still reeling off Teresa's word. I mean, I mean, probably gonna, I'm probably Teresa. I'm stealing that from you. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go preach it somewhere else. Yeah, I'm stealing it from you. I'm doing my hand, my 
My wounded hand is going to be the one. My wounded hand is going to be the hand that heals. Amen. Well, here's what I want to do. And I'm going to ask Michael and I'm going to ask Pastor Steve and, and Prophet Michael to come up. Come up. Go and stand next to me and want to minister. You know, Pastor Steve and Michael, I want you to minister over our friends. Uh, Pastor uh, Betty and Ron Lester. Amen. Uh, yes. uh, and, and, and minister over them. Amen. 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 Lord Jesus, come to see us. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father.